Okay. It's quite early in the morning. I've got to get this done because I've got other things to do today. So I've come down here as early as I can. Uh, today's jobs will be putting some beans in. I'll show you them in a minute. And maybe if I get a chance to have a bit of a tidy up. This is our spud crop. These are doing well. This row here, you can see, is all the potatoes that we saved. So they're the little ones that all seem to get left after you've grown your own spuds. And uh, they seem to be doing just as well as the other ones. Those rows were all seed potatoes that we bought. What else have we got going on over here? Uh, you can see the uh, gooseberries fattening up quite nicely. And the apple trees now, there's the, uh, that one's a russet apple. And this one, I don't really know what this one is. I haven't worked out the variety yet, but you can see all the blossoms gone now, but it's starting to form its little apples. This is good. Obviously there's uh, more weeding to do in and around the onions. I'll give this lot a good water as well. And some of the paths look a bit weedy, but I'll get the shears on them. The broad beans, they've picked up a lot. And they've now all got flowers on them. So they'll be forming pods soon. And obviously the rhubarb. Even though I cut all the flowers off last time I was down here, they soon put some out. And that one looks like, let's see if I can get in here. It's actually grown through the fence to the other side, to the other plot. So that'll have to come off. I'll just pull that through. And cut that off in a minute. What else have we got going on? This is another gooseberry bush. But these ones are red gooseberries. They're much nicer, well, they're sweeter than the, the green gooseberries. Strawberry plants seem to be doing okay. And the radishes and that that I put in last time, actually, I didn't lose as many as I thought. And they're at. Uh, Starting to form little radishes, so I'll give them a, a bit of a water as well. Black currant bush, let's see how this is doing. I can see current starting to come on it, so that's good. So, despite it having the big bud mite, hasn't really affected it, doesn't seem to affect the harvest at all. And we do have a large black currant bush in our garden at home. What else is going on? Obviously the weed control is still down, but we have a lot of squashes now that we can put in. They just need to harden off a little bit. So, my main job today is to put all these in. So we've got bolotti beans, Russian kale, those are Brussels sprouts, and these are dwarf beans. And all the beans will go along here where I put these canes in. So we'll start that in with the bolotis, and we'll just come this way. Uh, we'll leave this one here because this is for our snake beans, which I didn't bring with me because they're not quite ready yet. And then I'll clear some other patches for the um, brassicas to go in because they'll have to be netted, otherwise, the birds and the butterflies will have them. So that's that really, so best crack on, starting with the beans. Alright, so I've prepared the bed for the beans, well a lot of beans anyway these ones, and I've started planting them, and what I'm doing is two plants to a cane, these beans will get easily to the top of the frame. And the other thing I've done, you might notice, is it's kind of hard to tell from this angle. But I've earthed up the sides of the bed. Let's see if I can... Let's 
So you can see just here, and there's a, a bit of a mound where I've earthed it up. And I've done that all the way around. So essentially it's like a massive pot. And the idea is, is that when I water, I usually just let the hose run gently into the area. And because of the sides, the water doesn't leak out. So the water stays where I want it and I use less water as well. I do that with the squashes and I've been doing that for years and it seems to work. It seems to put in each individual thing in like a little dip so that they retain the water around the roots. So there's that. The beans themselves, as I've uh, mentioned before, were all grown from seeds that we saved. And we've grown them in these. These are the, um, I don't know, they're like little plastic coffee cups that you get out of vending machines. And we've been using these now for a couple of years, but they are starting to go a bit. But we have invested in some more pots um, rather than trays we've found these little seed pots they're probably about this big but they last for years so we've bought them and then we won't have to throw them away for a while and to plant the beans all I'm doing it's a bit hard to maneuver about in there is I'm digging a couple of holes around the cane with my trowel so one that side on this side. So there's my two holes. I'm gonna get a bean plant, see if I can get one out of the pot with one hand. Oh, just you can see the the roots on it are good. I'm just plonking it in the hole a little bit deeper than it was in the pot and I'm angling it towards the cane slightly we want it to climb up the cane and where it's got little tendrils I'll just wind them round a bit and it should start gripping on its own very soon and these bean plants have been in our cold frame or one of our cold frames for a couple of weeks now so I'll just pop that one in there Slightly angled, and uh, there we go. So there we go, and I've just got those ones to do, which will come down this side. I've got 12 plants left, and that works out roughly to a cane. And if we lose half, so that should be 20 plants. If we lose half the plants, we've still got 10 plants, but I doubt we will. They seem to be fairly good. Not many pests seem to go for them. I mean, obviously, raw beans, they tend to get black fly, but we found you can just hose them off. We don't really use any kind of... Well, we don't use any pesticides or herbicides at all. We do use the odd plant feed. Most of when we're trying to move away from buying stuff and making our own plant feed, we make most of our own compost, but we do still have to buy some. And where possible, we get peat free, obviously. Um, but I found as well with the weed control fabric being down, you need obviously less weeding to do, but the soil structure is, uh, is much better. This soil down here is quite sandy but it holds together well and it does hold moisture quite well so it's good and it is improving with the uh putting the weed control fabric down so we're not digging it over and exposing the the microbes and the little critters that live in there that do the the good work to the air so yeah so that's how i'm getting on with the beans i've just got some more to plant and then i'll move on to the next thing all right all right so all the bolotties are in now. It's a bit windy. I might have to tie some of these back into the canes. And I've also sorted out the little bed for where the snake beans will go. And here, I'm just planting up some dwarf beans. And I've done the same thing here where I've made 
essentially like a, a kind of sunken bed or just pulled the earth up or some earth up to the sides so I've kind of got like a massive trench if you like and like I mentioned earlier that means that I can use less water it also means if I'm honest that I can put the hose into one of the beds the trenches let it run and do other things rather than sit there and hold on to it and um, water and everything and I do this with the squashes mainly because squashes take so much water and we grow, grow quite a lot of them that it would take me ages just to stand there and water each plant so I'll make a trench when I plant those up I'll do a video for that as well I'll make a trench or a big pit if you like and then I can just leave the hose running in it for like half an hour uh, and that seems to work it's worked for years but anyway let's just get the rest of these in these are dwarf beans I haven't staked them yet they don't really get that much bigger than they are now but if I need to stake them what I can do is just put a stake in each end and run a line of string down each row and stake and tie them to the string I say I think last time we grieved these they probably didn't get they only got to about maybe just over a foot high and they're not that far off it now I think I found an ant's nest but never mind so yeah these are grown the same way again these were all sown by my wife. She's much better at labelling plants than I am. Oh, I tend to forget. But they're sown in the same kind of cups. Take that out. And if I can get one out. There we go. So, there's its roots. And I'm just going to plonk it in the hole. Again, I'm planting them a little bit deeper than perhaps you usually would. But that helps support them as well. And as that one's on its own, I've got another one. Most of the um, rows, most of the plants have got two in each thing. But this one I'll probably put in with that one. And then I've got those four there. And then the rest of this bed, so that bit there, I'm either going to put the sprouts that I've got just there or some of the Russian kale. It'll be one or the other. And the other thing I've done, obviously, is I've now moved weed control fabric that was there down that way not that we grow anything that's more likely going to be a path um, and I'll probably get the shears out and some of the other stuff I may not have time to do a lot of weeding today um, but that's another good reason like I've said before using weed control fabric means that when I come to plant squashes I'm not having to weed dig I can literally just pull all that up make my little trench or pit or whatever you want to call it and chuck the plants in and it's done it takes less time There's some plants coming up that you might find on your plot as well this plant here is a common one we get down here this is called uh, I think it's called fumatory or common fumatory again a lot of these plants that you see on allotment plots and verges and hedgerows and all that kind of thing all oh, loads of herbal remedies for them Fumatory, I believe, something to do with breathing difficulties. I'm trying to find some. Ah, uh... oh, there's some. Here's some. This comes up quite a lot down here. I think that one there is a chard. It's probably self seeded. This one here, you might get this on your allotment plot or even in your garden. This one's called Fat Hen. I'll put the other names for them. This one you can eat. Um, a lot of the plants you can eat as well. So there, look, there's another, this one here. That's another fumatory. There's also things like the, the cleavers or sticky weed, as people call it, coming up. And then nettles and what have you. But there are a lot of plants down here that you could probably cultivate and use them in herbal remedies if you're into that sort of thing. It's worth looking them up anyway, because you might find that they've got other benefits. And a lot of them will attract animals that will help you with your plant. See, this one is where we put this is where our experiment with parsnips. And I haven't weeded this one, as you can tell. It's kind of weedy. Um, but again, oh, some parsnips coming up, amongst other things. But this will all get cleared soon. There's another common site it's a field poppy obviously they like to grow where the earth has been disturbed so an allotment is probably good for that 
anyway I'm gonna get on with planting the rest of my beans and the other stuff that I brought down here but yeah we're getting there and next time I come down here I'll probably have to do a lot of weeding but most of this I can just cut back with the shears because it'll have weed control fabric on it within the next week or two because all that will go on the places where there's weeds but easy really okay get on with this then okay so this is Russian kale now, it looks like we bought it well we haven't this seed tray has been reused I bought some geraniums a couple of weeks ago because we lost a lot of ours due to the cold and, uh, and the wet over the winter usually our geraniums are fine but for some reason over the winter this time they weren't and my wife has reused this tray to plant our Russian kale and this is all grown from saved seed and uh, it's easy to plant again I'm going to cram as many into here as I can but dig a hole a few inches deep get your plant out of your little seed tray I can do it one handed come on there we go and you can see they've got good roots on them pop it in the hole and then obviously backfill the hole there we go I've probably got more plants than I've got room for in this particular bed but I've got more space the other thing I'm going to do as well is once I've finished planting these up is I'm going to cover them with that that's a net or a frame that we made years ago and it's just wire quite thin gauge wire two reasons one it stops the birds because we've got a lot of pigeons and doves and whatnot in the area and they'll come down and just peck a lot of this stuff to bits especially the brassicas they don't seem to bother with anything else for some reason and the other thing is is obviously because it's a brassica it's prone to getting butterflies cabbage white butterflies and what have you so this protects it a little bit but we do still go around the plants and check them for eggs as well so once i've planted that up i'll probably get another i don't know two rows in there so we'll have 12 plants in there and that'll leave me with a few which I'll put somewhere else. I've got another frame just over there holding the uh, weed control fabric down. But I've got some space over there. That's what we use these little baskets for as well. In fact, I might even... No, I'll use the net. We use these little baskets again. That just protects the plant for a little bit. Uh, and I've got those Brussels sprouts, sprouts and a spinach plant to go in, which I'll do as well. So, yeah, here we go. So I'm now putting the Russian kale in then I'll get that put in and then I'll be done and that'll be it for today and then I'll just have to come down here and hit all the weeds but it shouldn't take too long I might harvest some leeks as well I can see that there's a lot more of them going to seed so I'll take all the seed heads off and uh, we'll have leekscapes I'll take some of the leeks with me as well and possibly even a few radishes which are doing well. There's quite a few here now. Look, I can actually see some sort of respectable sized ones there. So, not bad, all in all. Okay, carry on then. Okay, well, that's me done. Uh, I managed to get what I wanted done and out of the way. So, here I've planted the rest of the Russian kale, three sprout plants. And the spinach they've all been watered in now and then over this side I've got two rows of two plants or two rows of ten plants even so that's 20 bolotti beans in there which should do well this bed is reserved for when our snake beans are ready to go out which won't be that long now they've been hardening off in the cold frame for a while there Russian kale and these have all been watered in now and these are our dwarf beans so yeah all in all I managed to get quite a bit done 
What else have I done? So it still looks a bit wild and overgrown in places, but it's uh, it's getting there. Most of it's a quick fix. I mean, there, for example, where there's some leaks, I don't know, five, ten minutes weeding, and that's done. I've harvested some more rhubarb. Uh, we have got a lot of it this year. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got gooseberries coming. This isn't a big plant, this red one, not compared to the gooseberry we've got up that end, which has got hundreds and hundreds of berries on. That's why I started um, propagating these, or trying to, anyway. If you have a look down here, where I've uh, pinned it to the ground in places, it should already have roots on it, but I'll check those in a week or two's time. And if the plants are ready to come up, then I'll repot those and extend that bed, or at least that variety of gooseberries. Uh, this area, obviously I've chopped it down with the shears, but that'll have weed control on it within a week or two. So yeah. What are we getting there? All in all, it looks like we're gonna get a good year this year. But that's because I've had a lot more time to put into the plot than I did last year. Anyway, that's me, done for today. Okay, thanks for watching.